So, in Friday the 13th, the map is a very useful item. It shows you the position of all the objectives and the councils as they move around the map. This can give you an idea of what has been checked and what not. The map does not show such things as fuse spark, battery, gas, propeller and the shank. The map can be found in drawers by visiting map signs or equipping a perk which allows you to start with a map. The trap is probably one of my favourite items in Friday the 13th which you can use or place to slow down Jason. You can place traps in front of the door, behind the door or inside the door which is probably the most efficient thing to do. You can also place traps on objectives such as the radio or the generator meaning if Jason wants to destroy either then he'll basically have to step into them. The trap can be found in houses but you can always find like three more traps in the barn. The flare gun is a one shot item that can stun Jason and reveal his position to other players on the map. It has like an insane range as you can see right here and a fairly long stun duration. Enough stun duration that you can actually start the car and drive away given that Jason does not have rage in which case you probably shouldn't do this unless you have like a pocket knife or something. But yeah, there's plenty of time to start the car. You can easily land a hit on Jason when he breaks down the door or through windows. You can't however shoot through the door be aware that the flare gun can be blocked by Jason if he uses combat stance and presses Z. There is also a tiny bug or glitch where if Jason starts throwing his knife, then you will not get a stun on Jason. The flare gun can be found in pretty much any house, but it's mainly found inside the big houses. There is also a perk that allows for Jason to stay longer mark if you shoot him. The firecracker is a one use item that can be dropped on the floor, creating an area of effect that stuns Jason through the walk into it. The firecracker is best used when Jason tries to shift onto you, simply drop the firecracker when you see the bus on your screen and run into the area of effect. The firecracker can also help you out if you're in a corner position and can't get out. It can also stun Jason through the door if you're taking it down and it can also be used to chain stun Jason. Simply throw down the firecracker so it explodes just after it comes out of stun animation. Be aware that Jason can block the firecracker through the combat stands and certain jellies Jason's melee range can even hit uh, through the area of effect. Also beware of throwing knives. The firecracker can be found in drawers in various houses or by equipping a perk allowing you to start with a firecracker. The healing spray is a one use item that can be used to heal yourself by pressing the item slot corresponding to the spray. You can also heal other people by pressing the same button. The healing can be useful for tanking traps around objectives as you won't always have a pocket knife around. Be aware that a killer will get an audio notification when you step in the trap. The healing can be found in drawers and on shelves in bathrooms, all by equipping a perk. There's even a perk that allows you to get two sprays out of one spray. The gun is a one use range item that can stun Jason for long duration. The gun has about medium range and gets outranged by the flare gun. The gun cannot get blocked by Jason. It can however friendly fire, so be careful if you want to save people grab when using the gun. Try and aim as far away from the council as possible. The gun can also shoot through Jason, killing people who are lined up. When using the gun, try not to hesitate or hold onto the gun. There's nothing worse than dying with the most powerful weapon in your hands. Instead, if Jason blinks, duke him. Then as soon as he comes out of animation, shoot him. You can also use the gun to chain stun Jason. There's only one gun available per map and it can theoretically be found anywhere, but almost all the time spawn in the big house, the barn, the shooting range or the mechanic shed. You can also get the gun by spawning as Tommy Jarvis. The pocket knife is an item that allows you to escape Jason's grasp. It stuns Jason and knocks him a few meters back. The pocket knife can be used to remove traps. Simply crouch near the trap and hold down E. Jason gets no notification of this. The pocket knife can be found in drawers scattered around the houses. The radio is an item in the game that allows you to communicate with your counselors who are further away. The radio doesn't take up any item slot that can be found in drawers or by equipping a perk that lets you start with the radio and increases the range of the radio. Melee weapons are used in the game for stunning Jason and defending yourself. There are a total of 10 melee weapons in Friday. Here's a display of the different melee weapons and their stats. First off, durability determines the amount of hits the weapon can do before it breaks. This is also determined by luck and other perks. Damage determines how much damage the weapon is going to do to Jason. Strength increases damage of the weapon as well. When Jason has taken enough damage, his mask will fall off, which can be set up for killing him later. 
Stun determines how likely the weapon is to stun Jason. Stun is also determined by strength. If you want a good stun weapon, you should go for the baseball bat as it has a 100% stun chance. You can use the melee weapon to stun Jason if you grab someone. This will release the counselor even if you don't stun Jason, he will still drop the counselor but he will be able to act immediately after. A good way to use the melee weapon is to wait for Jason to break down the door, then hit him as he will be stuck in animation. Be aware that Jason can break down the door with a combat stance or smash it down from the side, making this strategy way more risky. You can also cleverly hide around corners in the house and hit Jason as he comes by. If you're making no movements whatsoever, Jason can't pinpoint your location in the house. You can also stun Jason if he's occupied chasing someone else, breaking down stores or destroying stuff. Another strategy is to try and bait a melee hit or grab out of Jason, then strike back when he's open. When you're going to hit Jason, always run backwards straight after in case your weapon doesn't stun. This is not needed if you're using the baseball bat. With a melee weapon, you can also enter combat stands by pressing Z. This allows you to dash to the side or backwards by double clicking the way you want to go. Combat stands also allows you to block by right clicking. If you go into blocking stands, you can't dash however. In combat stands, you will continue to track your opponent when he moves. Combat stands does however drain a massive amount of stamina and I wouldn't recommend using it unless needed. So one of the reasons why I don't like the combat stands is because it is easily countered by Jason's own combat stands or simply by throwing knives at the counters because they are extremely mobile. Combat stand doesn't block um, the grass spider and the only time you should really be using combat stands if you're against a Jason who only hacks and slashes and you have no way out 